Top 10 Unsolved Mysteries of the World Can't Explained As a race, we humans love mysteries, regardless of whether they are simple riddles, exciting novels or something much bigger. Scientists, historians and enthusiasts have dedicated their entire careers to trying to solve some of the greatest unsolved mysteries of the world, yet there are many just seem unsolvable. 1. Nazca Lines The geoglyphs, more commonly known as the Nazca Lines, were first spotted from the air in 1939 when a pilot flew over the Nazca region of the Peruvian coastal highlands. They were designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994, and the area stretches more than 50 miles 80 kilometers, between the towns of Nazca and Palpa, 248 miles 400 kilometers, south of Lima. That discovery was made by pilot Eduardo Juan Gomez de la Torre as if he flew over the hills of Elangina Valley and Pampas de Jumana, as reported by El Commercial. The mystery about why they were created has been debated for decades. One theory is that the geoglyphs are connected in some way to water. For example, a triangular geoglyph at the bottom of the Cerro Blanco mountain runs along the water veins inside the mountain while the condor geoglyph is linked to local legend, which states that when the condor flies over the mountain, great rains follow. Similarly, the hummingbird geoglyph only appears in the summer following heavy rainfall. All of the drawings were said to have been drawn using a single line that never crosses itself, and were believed to be an appeal to the gods to bring rain. 2. Beale Ciphers the treasure was said to have been obtained by an American man named Thomas J. Beale in the early 1800s, from a mine to the north of Santa Fe, at that time part of a Spanish province, in an area that today would most likely be part of Colorado. According to the pamphlet, Beale was the chosen leader of a group of 30 gentlemen adventurers from Virginia, who stumbled upon the rich mine of gold and silver while hunting buffalo. They spent 18 months mining thousands of pounds of precious metals, which they then charged Beale with transporting back home to Virginia and burying in a secure location. Beale made multiple trips to stalk the hiding place, and then encrypted three messages with the location of the treasure, a description of it, and the names of the owners and their relatives. Beale placed the ciphertexts and some other papers in an iron box, which he gave in 1822 to a reliable person the Lynchburg innkeeper Robert Morris. The treasure was supposed to be buried near Montvale in Bedford County, Virginia. B asked Morris not to open the box unless Beale or one of his men failed to return from their journey within 10 years. Sending a letter from St. Louis a few months later, Beale promised Morris that a friend in St. Louis would mail the key to the cryptograms, but it never arrived. 23 years later, in 1845, Morris opened the box, finding two plain text letters from Beale, and several pages of ciphertext separated into papers 1, 2, and 3. Morris had no luck in solving the ciphers, and decades later left the box and its contents to an unnamed friend. Using an edition of the United States Declaration of Independence as the key for a modified book cipher, the story tells how the friends successfully deciphered the second cipher text, which gave a description of the buried treasure. Unable to solve the other two cipher texts, the friend ultimately made the letters and cipher texts public, in a pamphlet entitled The Beale Papers, published by another friend, James B. Ward, in 1885. Ward is thus not the friend. Ward himself is almost untraceable in local records except that a man with that name owned the home in which a Sir Morris, identified as the consort of Robert Morris, died at 77, Lynchburg, Virginia newspaper, May 21, 1865. He almost was recorded as becoming a master mason in 1863. 3. Mary Celeste on November 7, 1872, the 282-ton brigantine Mary Celeste set sail from New York Harbor on its way to Genoa, Italy. On board were the ship's captain, Benjamin Ness Briggs, his wife, Sarah, and their two-year-old daughter, Sophia, along with eight crew members. Less than a month later, on December 5, 
a passing British ship called the Gracia spotted Mary Celeste at full sail and adrift about 400 miles east of the Azores, with no sign of the captain, his family or any of the crew. Aside from several feet of water in the hold and a missing lifeboat, the ship was undamaged and loaded with six months' worth of food and water. Mary Celeste had a shadowy past. Originally christened Amazon, it was given a new name after a series of mishaps, including the sudden illness and death of its first captain and a collision with another ship in the English Channel. An investigation into whether to grant payment by its insurers to the De Gracia's crew for salvaging the ghost ship found no evidence of foul play. Mary Celeste would sail under different owners for 12 years before its last captain deliberately ran into ground in Haiti as part of an attempted insurance fraud. In 2001, best-selling novelist and adventurer Clive Kessler claimed to have found the wreck of Mary Celeste, but later analysis of the timbers retrieved from the ship he found showed the wood was still living at least a decade after Mary Celeste sank. Meanwhile, one of the most famous maritime mysteries in history endures. Why would an experienced captain such as Briggs, or his sailors, abandon a perfectly sound ship? Theories over the years have ranged from mutiny and pirate attack to assault by giant octopus or sea monster, while the more scientifically minded proposed an explosion caused by fumes from the 1,700 barrels of crude alcohol in the ship's hold. Sir Arthur Conan Oil even weighed in with a short story published in 1884, in which the inhabitants of the ghost ship fell victim to an ex-slave seeking vengeance. On the less sensationalized end, an investigation chronicled in the 2007 documentary The True Story of the Mary Celeste was able to offer no definite conclusion, but did suggest a scenario in which a faulty chronometer, rough seas and a clogged onboard pump could have led Briggs to order the ship abandoned shortly after sighting land on November 25, 1872. According to the last entry in the ship's logbook, made that morning, Mary Celeste was within sight of the Azores Isle and of Santa Maria, some 500 miles from where the De Gracia would find it nine days later. 4. Jack the Ripper The identity of the killer of five, or possibly six, women in the East End of London in 1888 has remained a mystery, but the case has continued to horrify and fascinate. Between August and November 1888, the Whitechapel area of London was the scene of five brutal murders. The killer was dubbed Jack the Ripper. All the women murdered were prostitutes, and all except for one, Elizabeth Stride, were horribly mutilated. The first murder, of Mary Ann Nichols, took place on 31 August. Annie Chapman was killed on 8 September. Elizabeth Stride and Catherine F. Dowson were murdered 30 September and Mary Jane Kelly on 9 November. These are often referred to as the canonical five Ripper murders, although Martha Tabram, stabbed to death on August 6, 1888, is considered by some Ripperologists to be the first victim. There has been much speculation as to the identity of the killer. It has been suggested that he or she was a doctor or butcher, based on the evidence of weapons and the mutilations that occurred, which showed a knowledge of human anatomy. Many theories have been put forward suggesting individuals who might be responsible. One theory links the murders with Queen Victoria's grandson, Prince Albert Victor, also known as the Duke of Clarence, although the evidence for this is insubstantial. Violence to prostitutes was not uncommon and there were many instances of women being brutalized, but the nature of these murders strongly suggests a single perpetrator. A quarter of a mile from the scene of Catherine Eddow's murder, the words the Jews sick are not the men to be blamed for nothing, were found scrawled on a wall in chalk, and it was suggested this was written by the killer. A police officer ordered the words to be removed, fearing an anti-Semitic backlash in an area with a large Jewish population. The murderer is also sometimes thought to have made contact by letter with several public figures. These letters, like the chalk message, have never been proved to be authentic and may have been hoaxes. Jack the Ripper was never caught and he is not thought to have killed again after November 1888. 5. Bermuda Triangle 
The Bermuda Triangle is one of the great unsolved mysteries of, of the world, a section of ocean in the western North Atlantic where ships and aircrafts have disappeared under deeply suspicious circumstances. Included in this list is the infamous Flight 19, a group of five bombers who went on a routine training exercise in 1945 and never returned, as well as the search and rescue plane that went looking for them the same day. There is also the case of the Cyclops, a U.S. Navy boat that disappeared in 1918 with all 309 crew on board as well as the Connemara 4, a pleasure yacht, found adrift in 1955 with all the crew missing. By the time author Vincent Gaddis coined the phrase Bermuda Triangle in a 1964 magazine article, additional mysterious accidents had occurred in the area, including three passenger planes that went down despite having just sent all swell messages. Charles Berlitz, whose grandfather founded the Berlitz language schools, stoked the legend even further in 1974 with a sensational bestseller about the legend. Since then, Scores of fellow paranormal writers have blamed the Triangle's supposed littleness on everything from aliens, Atlantis and sea monsters to time warps and reverse gravity fields, whereas more scientifically minded theorists have pointed to magnetic anomalies, water sprouts or huge eruptions of methane gas from the ocean floor. In all probability, however, there is no single theory that solves the mystery. As one skeptic put it, trying to find a common cause for every Bermuda Triangle disappearance is no more logical than trying to find a common cause for every automobile accident in Arizona. Moreover, although storms, reefs and the Gulf Stream can cause navigational challenges there, maritime insurance leader Lloyds of London does not recognize the Bermuda Triangle as an especially hazardous place. Neither does the U.S. Coast Guard, which says, in a review of many aircraft and vessel losses in the area over the years, there has been nothing discovered that would indicate that casualties were the result of anything other than physical causes. No extraordinary factors have ever been identified. 6. The Loch Ness Monster Loch Ness, located in the Scottish Highlands, has the largest volume of fresh water in Great Britain. The body of water reaches a depth of nearly 800 feet and a length of about 23 miles. Scholars of the Loch Ness Monster find a dozen references to Nessie in Scottish history, dating back to around AD 500, when local picks carved a strange aquatic creature into standing stones near Loch Ness. The earliest written reference to a monster in Loch Ness is a 70th century biography of St. Columba, the Irish missionary who introduced Christianity to Scotland. In 565, according to the biographer, Columba was on his way to visit the King of the Northern Picts near Inverness when he stopped at Loch Ness to confront a beast that had been killing people in the lake. Seeing a large beast about to attack another man, Columba intervened invoking the name of God and commanding the creature to go back with all speed. The monster retreated and never killed another man. In 1933, a new road was completed along Loch Ness shore, affording drivers a clear view of the loch. After an April 1933 sighting was reported in the local paper on May 2nd, interest steadily grew, especially after another couple claimed to have seen the beast on land, crossing the shore road. Several British newspapers sent reporters to Scotland, including London's Daily Mail, which hired big game hunter Marmaduke Wetherill to capture the beast. After a few days searching the lock, Wetherill reported finding footprints of a large four-legged animal. In response, the Daily Mail carried the dramatic headline, Monster of Loch Ness is not legend but a fact. Amateur investigators kept an almost constant vigil, and in the 1960s several British universities launched expeditions to Loch Ness, using sonar to search the deep. Nothing conclusive was found, but in each expedition the sonar operators detected large, moving underwater objects they could not explain. In 1975, Boston's Academy of Applied Science combined sonar and underwater photography in an expedition to Loch Ness. A photo resulted that, after enhancement, appeared to show the giant flapper of a plesiosaur-like creature. Further sought our expeditions in the 1980s and 1990s resulted in more tantalizing, if inconclusive, readings. 
revelations in 1994 that the famous 1934 hotel was a hoax hardly dampened the enthusiasm of tourists and professional and amateur investigators to the legend of the Loch Ness Monster. 7. The Zodiac Letters The 1960s of the Bay Area of California are often remembered as a time of love and social expansion, but there remains a terrible and unexplained stain on the otherwise illustrious history. Alone an extremely elusive killer wandered the Bay Area streets at night. Known as the Zodiac Killer, because of his messages signed with a Zodiac symbol, he became one of the most infamous and terrifying killers in history. While he claimed to be responsible for the killings of 37 people, investigators were only able to confirm only seven victims, five were murdered, two survived. Throughout his serial killings, the Zodiac Killer would write letters to the Bay Area press in an attempt to brag and taunt his pursuing officers. But these weren't any ordinary letters. They were ciphers. From the late 1960s to the early 1970s the Zodiac Killer sent four coded letters. Of the four ciphers, only one has actually been solved. His letters were written in two parts. The first part was usually written in plain text, while the other was in cipher text, in which he claimed contained his identity. In the plain text part, he threatened newspapers to publish his letters or else he would kill more innocent people. In other segments of his letters, he listed the names of his next victims, creating havoc amongst the Bay Area. His goal was to use the media to instill fear in Bay Area citizens, and it worked. As cryptographers dug deeper into his letters, they were able to find out what drove the Zodiac Killer to keep killing. In the decades since, only one of these ciphers has ever been decoded. Numerous suspects have been investigated, but despite the enormous man hours that went into the investigation, both the murders and the letters remain unsolved. 8. Cryptos Like something from a Dan Brown novel, Cryptos is a cryptographic puzzle at CIA headquarters that has never been solved. The sculpture is 12 feet high, and stands on the grounds of the CIA complex in Langley, Virginia. American artist Jim Sandburn built it 25 years ago. Cryptos contains four hidden messages, carved out of metal. Those four messages are the clues to a riddle. Sandburn has hinted that solving the riddle will be something akin to a treasure hunt on the grounds of the CIA's headquarters. Three of the messages hidden in the sculpture have been solved. The fourth is 97 letters but no one has been able to decipher it. Even the code-cracking masters at the NSA, who were the first ones to solve the other three parts, gave up. In the 25 years since its dedication, three of these encrypted messages have been deciphered, but the fourth remains a mystery. Now known as one of the most famous unsolved codes in the world, the Cryptos is a fascinating lure for both amateur and professional cryptanalysts who, despite several clues from the sculptor, have been unable to crack the code. 9. Tao's Hump Most researchers investigating the hum express some confidence that the phenomenon is real, and not the result of mass hysteria or here is hypochondria, or extraterrestrials beaming signals to Earth from their spaceships. As in the case of the Kokomo hum, industrial equipment is usually the first suspected source of the hum. In one instance, Leventhal was able to trace the noise to a neighboring building's central heating unit. Other suspected sources include high-pressure gas lines, electrical power lines, wireless communication devices or other sources. But only in a few cases has a hum been linked to a mechanical or electrical source. There's some speculation that the hum could be the result of low-frequency electromagnetic radiation, audible only to some people. And there are verified cases in which individuals have particular sensitivities to signals outside the normal range of human hearing. Medical experts are quick to point out that tinnitus, the perception of sound when no external noise is present, is a likely cause. But repeated testing has found that many hearers have normal hearing and no occurrences of tinnitus. Environmental factors have also been blamed, including seismic activity such as microsisms, very faint, low-frequency earth tremors that can be generated by the action of ocean waves. Other hypotheses, including military experiments and submarine communications, have yet to bear any fruit. For now, 
hearers of the hum have to resort to white noise machines and other devices to reduce or eliminate the annoying noise. Leventhal, who recommends that some hearers turn to cognitive behavioral therapy to relieve the symptoms caused by the hum, isn't confident that the puzzle will be solved anytime soon. It's been a mystery for 40 years, so it may well remain one for a lot longer, Leventhal told the BBC. 10. Area 51. With all the secrecy shrouding Area 51, it's time for some light to be shed. Learn more about the nicknames, entertainment, food, spy planes, and rumors surrounding this infamous site. On August 15, 2013 the CIA finally acknowledged the existence of Area 51. After a repeated freedom of information request made by George Washington University the CIA lifted the veil of secrecy on Area 51. On December 8, 2013 President Obama makes an offhand comment about Area 51, becoming the first president to publicly acknowledge its existence. This does not mean they are talking openly about UFOs and military secrets but it does open the door for lawsuits and additional freedom of information request from the public. Officially, Area 51 is a remote facility used by the United States Air Force. Unofficially, it is a hotbed of rumors and conspiracy theories, mostly relating to UFO sightings. The remote location in Nevada, coupled with its intense level of secrecy, all research relating to Area 51 has been classified top secret, and its close proximity to the extraterrestrial highway, location of countless UFO sightings, have all combined to make the public deeply suspicious of what really goes on behind the gates of Area 51.